Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and today I have a 36 caliber Colt model of 1855 revolving rifle. And we're going to put a couple of rounds actually through it. So uh, this was one of the least popular uh, styles of the 1855. They made only a very small number of them in 36 caliber. Uh, although it has a remarkably long cylinder, and uh, <laughs> we started off shooting this, and you'll see the high speed clip in a minute, with a 25 grain powder charge, because we just wanted to be a little gentle on the gun. And that was like a complete powder puff, and it took up barely half of the, the cylinder, so, or the chambers. So we have now bumped it up to 30 grains of powder, which is still a pretty light load, because, let's face it, this is a gun that's Hmm, what is it, 170 years old now? So we don't need to really push our luck with it. But I might actually be able to hit that steel plate out there. So uh, one issue that comes up is, of course, what if it chain fires and all the all the balls go down range at the same time? Well, that means you get a really cool piece of footage, I think. Uh, it also means that I will be holding the gun back here and not putting my hand out in front. Uh, even if you don't have chain fire, you do have splatter coming out around the forcing cone. You don't put your hand in front of a revolver cylinder, and just because this is mounted on a rifle, it doesn't mean it's not a revolver cylinder anymore. So, um, let's get right down to it. Let's see. I want to start with... There we go! Was just over the top, and it's... There's really no felt recoil at all from that. So it's a 36 caliber round ball, 30 grain charge of powder. I think I was elevation good, a little bit low, and just off to one side. Uh, I do have sighting, rib, uh, sighting leafs here for 100, 300, and 600 yards, and I'm shooting at about 60, maybe 70. That, I think, was a hit. Yeah. I think I heard that one. Now, I am getting some uh, tangible or, or tactile spackling on my face, and I think that's because this has really large uh, percussion cap nipples on it, which I think is because this particular gun went to England. Uh, it's actually British proofed, which is something that was done with firearms that went to England that were not British made. And they had a whole different scale of percussion cap sizes than we do here in the U.S., or even did here in the U.S. at the time. So we've kind of cramped down some caps to fit, but proper sized caps uh, would seal better over the nipple, and they would lead to less, less spatter coming back out of the gun. But that's why you wear shooting glasses. All right, let's see if I can get another hit on that guy. That wasn't a hit, but I'm not sure where exactly it went. And I've only got one shot left. Just low. Well, a couple things that I can take away from this. First off, the firepower is nice. If this is 1855, you have very few options for repeating firearms. You can have something that's got two or maybe even three barrels, but if you want six shots, not a lot of options other than this. Uh, within the next few years you would start to get lever-action rifles, but for many years lever-action rifles were particularly underpowered. Now the 36 caliber version of this is not exactly a barn burner, but they made it in several much larger calibers. You could get these in 44, I think you could get them in even 56 caliber. That Well, they made them as shotguns as well. So. That gave you uh, a lot more uh, ballistic energy than you would get with something like a Volcanic or even a 44 Henry Rimfire. Uh, the gun is, for all of its apparent length, it's actually a really pretty comfortable gun to hold and to shoot, even with the fairly awkward position of, of keeping your hand back behind the trigger. Um, it, surprisingly to me, it actually balances quite nicely. So. Pretty cool. Uh, of course this would be one of Colt's less successful designs overall, uh, because of issues like 
the potential of chain fire and where you can hold your hand and all that sort of thing. But it did actually get adopted by the US military as the first mil US military repeating firearm taken into service. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the brief little shooting video. Thanks for watching.